Well, welcome to all of you. Uh, you know, I certainly can't remember the last time that the travel industry has experienced uh, a phenomenon really like this, where about a year ago, no one was talking about this topic. And now here we are, well, maybe Pablo and your colleagues at Microsoft, you were probably talking about this topic a year ago. Uh, but now it seems like the thing that everyone is talking about. And certainly, judging by the interest that we have seen in our coverage on Focuswire, and obviously with the crowd in here today, there is really such an appetite to learn about and understand, I would say, the good and maybe the bad and hopefully not the ugly about generative AI. And we are really delighted to have three people here with us who are really immersed in this world every day. So maybe if we can just start with a quick question for each of you, and Amy, we'll start with you. Is this tech hype or is this a game-changing opportunity? For me, I think it's definitely a game-changer opportunity. Okay. Pablo. I think it's both, actually. It's a hype and also a game-changing opportunity, and we'll discuss later on data that actually proves that. Okay. Matias. I'm not 100% sure if, <clears throat> if it's really about the chat interface, but there is so much technology in this whole stack that overall makes it game changing. There is something that is going to stick. Okay, very interesting perspectives. I'm curious if I can just ask by a show of hands in the audience, how many of you have at least played around with chat GPT in, in some way? Kind of, okay, well. Love it. That, that says a lot right there, so. Uh, maybe, Amy, maybe if we can start with you, it seems fitting Trip.com was one of the first major OTAs, maybe the first global OTA to integrate OpenAI's technology into your app with TripGen. You have since also launched a plugin for ChatGPT. I believe the plugin's coming for Bing very soon. Let's just take a quick look. We have a video uh, that shows a bit of how it functions in TripGen. understand you've had this since February what are you seeing what kind of usage what are, what are you learning yeah thank you for showing this video I think this video is took um, two months ago after that we already have several iterations so instead of only showing the text itself we already adding an image to to their answers and people are able to browse that their look and feel there and also we integrate part of the map people are able to see where all these recommendation pay off inches and also the hotels where the location it is. So this is one of the major integration we already done. You are able to experience if you download our app. And the other very important uh, upgrade is that we are released the voice search. At current that you're only able to type, but now we are able to enable users to speak to, with TripGen and then have the answer. And on top of the existing, the readable answer, the text, the links, and the image, and the app will respond to the question. Like if I'm asking for, like, give me some recommendation about hotels in Barcelona, that I can go directly to the hotel list page. I can further ask, like, can I suggest me some of the hotels close to the central station here, or close to the metro, or there's some kids friendly if I'm travel with my family it will also help me to filter that kind of results for us. So this is the current direction we're trying to go to. It's not only answering the question, but help people to actually perform and find the results there. And according, yeah, the product is brand new. We launched in February, this is like four months old now. But according to our early data, um, by end of the April, there's already 162 country users using the ChipGen products based on their IP address. And their behaviors is very encouraging. We see uh, 
the conversion rate for the Shibian user are twice of the average user. I mean, the same day conversion rate, price and order, three days or seven days, etc. And also the retention is also much higher, 30 to 40 percent higher than the average user. Maybe the data is a little bit quite sure, so we cannot see this is the result of their using that, but at least we are seeing very strong correlation. Did I hear you say the conversion is twice as much as yes. someone that might be doing the Every search user. on your, yeah. like... Yeah, we compare those users who are using ShipGen and the average user, I mean the total user using our app, the same day conversion rate, three day conversion rate, and seven day conversion rate is twice of the average user. Okay, that's interesting. We'll talk a bit more about that. Yeah. Uh, Matthias uh, with Kayak. So then you were kind of the next round, if you will, of news that came out with the plugin. We have a video, just a very brief video uh, about your plugin that is available in Chat GPT. So yes, yeah, talk to us a bit about what you are seeing there and um, you know what you're learning. Exactly, so we, we launched on the ChatGPT plugins in the first batch, which was about end of March. And, and so the great thing about that plugin is that it's already now, I would say, for everyone. You don't know where you want to go, like in that video, we can help you. You want to know, you know where you want to go, but you're very flexible on the dates and you want to have the best price, we can help you. But also like you have an extremely specific demand, you want to have the morning flight, you want to have this airline, you want to have a hotel with breakfast and a pool, we can help you too. Um, it has been extremely game changing experience in terms of like, we have done a lot of chat based systems before. Right. And this one now is just a game changer in how well it understands the users and how well the answers come back and how well it can cater to the preferences of the user. And what we see is that the traffic that we get on the plugin, it's initially you think like, well, it's a hype and there are so many people kicking the tires. It actually very matches very well to the users who we see on our other platforms. You see the same amount of searches for specific hotels. You see the same preferences for what a hotel should have. It's just like this group of users who really wants us and brands to be in that specific environment, okay. which is a chat-based experience. And, and we are we're very happy to be there um, right away. Uh, can you give us a sense that what are you at Kayak able to learn, if at all, from the plugin and from the usage? Like, what kind of data? Do you get any? Yeah, so the, the interesting thing and definitely the challenge is that um, in this model of ChatGPT, we are becoming a little bit of an, of an agent. So we no longer own the customer profile as much. Okay. But what it really has as an opportunity is that we can now have this conversation where we can add a lot of grounding and deep detail and great data on convincing people better why this is the right choice. Okay. So like they get right away, they, they come with all their preferences. Like you can have a very long query where you just say everything you want to have. You don't have to go through the whole shelf. You immediately get just the things you want. And we can now also like, it's, it's very easy for you now to verify, is that really what I asked for? And now we can also, and that's what I mean, together with other open AI technology, we can now also like prepare for you like a summary. Why is this the hotel you should go to? Really interesting. So Pablo, of course, you know, Microsoft is moving very fast mm -hmm. with all of this. Um, updates rolling out all the time. We recently heard about how now Bing is the search engine within ChatGPT. Um, we have, and of course, there's the Bing chat interface. And so we want to show a little example of, this is someone, uh, a video of some, a family that has looked for some options and now is asking, I'm hoping you can see this, it's going to, it'll scroll up in a second. This is uh, someone that has searched for some travel options in Bing chat. And now they want to see the pros and cons of the various options that have been already shared in a chart. So here are the pros and cons in a table of some of the different packages that were presented earlier.
So let's just talk yep. a minute about what we're seeing here. Um, you know, and it's providing the links there to learn more, Thomas Cook, EasyJet and things. Help me understand how that is surfacing those choices. Because obviously there's many more results that could have probably fulfilled that query. Yeah, I think, I think it's important first to contextualize why um, this is happening and what's the role that we have with OpenAI. So the conversation of Microsoft with um, OpenAI and ChatGPT started actually almost seven years ago. Right. We invested in the company um, in 2019 and we made a big um, you know, um, announcement also from an investment perspective um, earlier this year where we are becoming the largest shareholder of OpenAI ChatGPT. Right. The result of that is that we are adding that technological layer of ChatGPT on every single product of Microsoft, from Excel to PowerPoint to Windows to Bing. And Bing is our search engine. And the reason why this is strategic for travel is because the search engine plays a critical role in generating demand. Now, if you look at the experience that we just saw, the challenge or the complexity on search engines is that understanding the context of the user it's not easy, it's not straightforward. And here, as we have heard on, on, on the two examples, I think we're playing a game of hyper-personalization and relevance. And at the end of the day, if you put relevance in front of a potential user, you boost your conversion rates. What happened right there is that we are having the ability right now through the new Bing with the power of uh, ChatGPT to be able to, from a given query, answer in ways that we couldn't done before. As a matter of fact, and we were discussing earlier um, an example here, uh, the early query to that table was actually me typing the following. I want a holiday with five, odd, five people, three of them kids, two adults. I want a place that it's not longer than three hours by plane from Barcelona. I wanted to have attractions for kids, museums for adults, and I don't want it to be too hot nor too cold. That query literally is impossible to answer in the old days of search. Right. ChatGPT enables that. And on top of that, the conversation afterwards that you just saw there. Yeah. So it pulls the data from both the web and the data points that we have in a very personalized way, which shortens that conversion path towards the booking. Okay, so I'm still trying to understand. I, I did a search on Bing Chat just yesterday, and it was something, you know, a family of four in London with some specific dates. The original result that came up only showed me two hotels. Yeah. How is it determining which two hotels to show me? Yeah. So the essence of it works exactly the same way as the uh, search engine. So think from an SEO perspective. At the end of the day, what you're trying to do is add the most relevant results to a given query based on the data that you have. Now, this is machine learning. So it actually, based on the chat experience, you can refine actually that engine. So it might be that based on the historic, based on the user behavior that you had, those two were relevant at that given time. But the beauty is if today you go and search on every given traditional search engine and we type in Barcelona as a query, as a keyword, probably we all in this room get the same answer. Whereas the magic with ChatGPT is that it's able to consider way more data points, and from the same query, it might actually pull a different answer to each one of us. So, so what does this then mean for brands and you know, for the suppliers, for the OTAs? You know, when the, the search that I had done, the, I then asked it for more results, and then it gave me more, and it gave me a map. All of them had links to booking.com. Um, so what does this mean, again, and what, what should brands keep in mind as far as maybe new SEO strategies? The chat experience, it's something that we launched um, in February. So just to put facts in here, uh, we have had in the first three months, 500 million chat actually um, engagements. Yep. So still early on. Okay. So of course, there's some brands that jump in, like for example, here we have Trip.com, Kayak, and others that you mentioned that are starting early into the game to integrate their kind of experience into that chat experience. Right. Now, from a tip or to the audience, what we see is that on this new chat experience, it's all about the relevance to the user. So there's formats that are gonna be likely to be shown up more than others. For example, in the new chat experience, as you saw, it's gonna be more visual. There's gonna be more images. There's gonna be more tables. 
because that helps simplify the complexity of a query and an understanding of where, from a user standpoint. So if those companies that are out there willing to attract demand are kind of building those assets and we can do and help them from a Microsoft advertising perspective, that actually will likely increase the chances of increasing the appearance on, on those experiences. Okay. But again, early days and we are still iterating and, and learning a lot as we go. Okay, very interesting. So, Amy, maybe you can talk to us a bit about, you know, what are you thinking about now as far as your next steps? I understand there's be some itinerary planning capabilities. Yeah, I think the important part that how ChatGPT will change the user, how they search for information um, from a product perspective. I think uh, everything in China, we, we say the mobile first, you know, that yeah. <laughs> everything we build starting from mobile. So when the day of like, um, mobile internet is about the graphic user interface. People are dragging or like touching on the touch screen on your phones. So this is how the way we are attacked with the, um, our cell phone, we attack with the machine. But after this ChatGPT things and large language model things introduced, I think there's a new brand new way that we are interact with machine that is so-called language user interface. We are able to using the natural language to ask for the very complex question, like the, um, the travel planning to get answer and help from the machine. And those knowledge is used to, we are only able to access to ask someone in this industry that they give us their exact answer. Now the ChatGPT, we are able to using the natural language to get the result and the processing because the, the, the power of the, the large language model. So I think this brand new way that will change in the future that how we are able to provide the service to our user. Because travel is not about like the booking the flight, booking the hotel, the booking procedure itself, but it's just very first from where I get expired where to travel. And then I, to ensure that select from the products which I want to book and all the way down to the road that where I going to die, what I should do in the day activities. So take a very quick example for my last uh, weekend trip to driving to the Belgium from our Amsterdam office. I asking where I should park my car nearby the Diva machine. So ask the chip gen and I got several um, the, the, the suggestion. There's like close to 700 meters away, et cetera. So that's the things. It's also about the travel, but yeah. it's not only about the booking itself. Okay, very interesting. Uh, you know, and I'm curious, Matisse, can you give us a sense of what you're thinking about as far as next steps for Kayak? And then I'd also be curious to know how you may be using it internally for your operations. Yeah, I wanna, I first wanna, wanna attach to, to Pablo's point with the table. Um, yeah. ChatGPT has a very interesting opportunity for automation. Like you can go in there and say, I wanna have a flight, a hotel, and a car, and it makes these different requests and puts them all together. Or you, can, you could say like, please get me the flight prices for every weekend this year, and it's gonna put them together. Um, but now coming to our, which is, I, I think, a game changer because right now this is very manual and now someone is doing work for you. Right. But, but looking at where we are going, I, I, I look at it like this. So ChatGPT, it's a, it's a great reader. It's a fantastic writer and it knows a lot about the world. But, but the magic really happens if you enrich it with unique, real-time, personalized data. Like a simple example, ChatGPT right now wouldn't know if a coffee shop is open or even still exists, right? But, but what we know is that we don't only have the prices, we also have reviews that describe experiences of previous travelers. Uh, we can attach it together with like a third party map service. We can attach it together with your preferences. And, and then there's this whole magic where, where ChatGPT more becomes like, how should I say, like an echo surface. Okay. Like really like understanding what you want and replying back all that great data. And, and we are there in the middle really enriching it with that data that makes the magic happen together with the other part of magic, which is that whole automation, presenting things in tables, um, knowing what you searched before and, and all that, what, what, what runs under the hyper personalization. This is really how we see it on the surface of users, consumers interacting with it. Yeah. Now for our own purposes, of course it goes from everywhere. I mean, we, we have generally, we look at the three buckets, which is our own productivity from generating text of assisting coding, whatnot. There's the back office, which is translating text, looking at the quality of text, improving text, summarizing text, everything you can imagine. And then the third category is all the consumer facing surfaces, which can be like Bing, it can be the ChatGPT interface, but it also can be enriched experiences on our own pages too, 
that are powered by ChatGPT, and for instance, like TripGen is something running in Trip.com, right? Right. So this is the whole spectrum that we are right now looking at. The the only thing that is out there right now is is the plugin, which we have since end of March. But but we're looking at all the the whole spectrum and and seeing uh, where we can get um, leverage and innovation out of this. So yeah, there's been a lot of mentions about personalization and the word data, of course, all tied in there, which then makes us think about privacy issues and security issues. I'm wondering, you know, really anyone that wants to respond, or maybe Pablo, if you want to start with this one, um, you know, what is what are you doing? What needs to be done um, as far as ensuring data privacy for the users? Look, I think there's a lot of debate on this, and I think it's a good debate because it's needed. So uh, the position of Microsoft here, it's uh, totally aligned with you know, the regulation of, um, of, of, of data in a way that empowers user, but at the same time, you know, helps, you know, uh, progress and, and move forward with, with technology. So we are very compliant to everything from, you know, like privacy, from a security, and of course, uh, compliant to all the GDPR here in Europe and all, all the other kind of mechanisms of protection. I think there's a point though, that opens up with ChatGPT, which is also the bias of the data. Yes. And I think this is something that, as an industry, we need to sit down together. And, and I think we're working on and we're putting teams specifically to manually train the models. Because the problem here, the underlying problem, is that the information that we have today in this world uh, comes with an asymmetry. There is no one unique source of truth. And at the end of the day, ChatGPT pulls what exists out there, right? And so how do we bring in, you know, neutral bias to it, I think it's something that we need to work towards. And I think this is probably one of the biggest kind of areas that we need to work as an in industry to make sure that we have the right standards and the right protection. So we have basically uh, a technology that is empowering all. You know, but I'm curious, we actually had a story on uh, FocusWire, I think it was last week. And one of the points that was made was that in order to guard against bias in AI uh, and make sure that you have well-represented data sets, you have to have a diverse AI team that's looking at that, right? Um, so ha is that something that, that any of you are thinking about internally or talking about? I mean, it, yeah. I'm really thinking, so the, the good news here is that, so first of all, I agree with everything that has been said. Um, good news is travel is a very factual business. So I, I think right now we can really jump into this technology because for us it's relatively low risk. Like, you know, even if the system hallucinates, how they call it, and it makes up a hotel that doesn't exist or it makes up a price that doesn't exist, right now there is no harm. It's a nuisance. It's going to be annoying. Um, but generally... It, Unless you're the one that booked that hotel and then you show up. But, but that's what I mean. Like on the booking step, you are yeah. then in the NDC space and all these yeah. technologies. Yeah. So, so that's the, the very hard truth. Um, but generally, yes, um, I, I, I think it is definitely important to, to still curate the content and make sure that that all the, the views are in there, and but also making sure that um, there is nothing, so to speak, bad in there. And right. and actually, there ChatGPT can be a chance because because coming back to kind of like the magic of the technology is that it, it has been very hard previously. If you think about millions of reviews and and yes. like how do you curate all of them? Right. How do you filter them? Right, that's very manual. And now you can use this technology of uh, text understanding and processing, and you know look for certain categories of, you know, reviews that are just not, or let's say fair, that are just like, you know, blatantly offensive, right? right and so, right. so in, yeah. in a way, I, I still think here half class full, uh, that it makes the world a better place, but, but yeah, definitely privacy, security, bias, all very valid topics. Okay, well, we are getting close to the end of our time. I would just like to end with a question for each of you. You know, the, obviously this is moving very fast, so we won't hold you to these predictions, uh, but I'm wondering, Amy, maybe if you can start, what do you expect to see maybe a year from now? Like, what might we see with this generative AI technology and the large language models? Yeah, I think from earlier from now, I can quite certain that all the players in different industries, not only for the travel, people will start to embrace to a certain level, deeper or like, like, like a little bit to this generative AI technology. If we see like five years or 10 years, I think it's going to be the change I mentioned, the LUI, the language user interface, and a lot of experience maybe will be rebuilt based on the 
the large language model, how we are able to make a large language model native experience from, from all dead points. Okay, Pablo. I think what I think is super quick, I think the future, the next feature of this looks like a basically a revolution of plugins. So if you think about it, we had just the OpenAI ChatGPT and the new Bing as the entry points to this technology. Now every single you know, plugin, it's basically a new entry point to this technology. And the future, and this is where we are building that ecosystem of apps that essentially it's gonna make those apps intersect to each other. So you may be navigating in a website and then calling out the plugin of Kayak or you know, Trip.com to make the purchase right there where you are. So I think this is what uh, we will expect to see and this is definitely the uh, strategy that we are pushing forward. Okay, and Matthias. So we, we see ChatGPT, it's, it's one of these fascinating technologies where the technology moves so much faster than the idea how to make money out of it and the commercialization. Um, it's overall, it's, it's gonna be very hard to, to get to the last person changing their behavior, but, but what, what I'm definitely thinking is that we're definitely thinking like there will be the generative search experience in a year will be so prevalent that there basically won't be any search engine anymore that doesn't have it. Okay. And you may engage one way or the other you want to do with it, but, but effectively it probably may touch everyone, including the people who already now basically use ChatGPT as their start page to the internet. So um, it, it, there may be a world where kind of like this three blue link search looks like phone books look to us. And uh, oh. it, it's really hard to say, but it, the, it, I, th I think it's going to be widespread prevalent, very hard to escape. Okay, wonderful. Well Amy, Pablo, Matias, thank you so much for your time.